Hello out there. Welcome to your next Mission Video Podcast. We have a, a great show for you today. We'll be talking about the National Museum of the United States Army and how they preserve and honor the accomplishment and sacrifices and commitment of the American soldiers. This is a history lesson you won't want to miss. Welcome to your next Mission Video Podcast, where we tell the stories of those who have served in the past and those who are serving today. From transition to financial wellness, VA benefits to mental health, we cover issues facing veterans, active military, and their families. Now here's your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army and co-founder of the American Freedom Foundation, Jack L. Tilley. Hello out there, warriors, past and present, and your families, and thank you for your service to our great country. Now, before we get started, I personally want to thank our presenting sponsors, Navy Federal Credit Union, where their members are the mission, and Purdue Global, where you can start your comeback. With additional sponsorship from Blue Cross Blue Shield, FEP Dental, Blue Cross Blue Shield, FEP Vision, and USAA, for making your next mission happen. They love our veterans and families. I'm going to say it every doggone time, we love them too. Today, we're going to focus on the history of the Army and depicted at the National Museum from the United States Army at Fort Belvoir. And I'm excited to introduce Brigadier General Retired Bert Thompson, President of the Army Historical Foundation and Foundation Board Member, the 13th Sergeant Major of the Army, Kenneth O. Preston. Welcome to the show. Ben, it's well, glad to be here. Thank you. Who is all you got? I, we got to have something well, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a lot to talk about. But before we do that, would each one of you tell the audience just a little bit about yourself? And, sir, we'll start with you. Yeah, again, Bert Thompson, uh, proud to be the president of the Army Historical Foundation uh, for the past 10 months. Uh, came to this uh, job, 31-year career in the United States Army, followed by seven years in uh, corporate doing uh, president CEO work of two different private companies. And then I had the opportunity to, to compete for this particular job. And uh, I was awarded the job one April. And I've uh, been in the foundation since then. Absolutely love the opportunity to serve, continue to serve, United States Army and do it through a not-for-profit called the Historical Foundation. So more about that a little bit later as we talk, but glad to be here. Thanks for hosting us. Oh, thank you so much. Now, you was the 13th Sergeant Major. You followed me, so don't say anything about the guy that was in front of you, okay? So <laughs> Sergeant Major, go ahead. Tell, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, hello, everybody. And uh, Ken Preston here and, uh, you know, soldier for life and uh, armored cavalry background, you know, 36 years in the Army and then... Uh, Retired in 2011 and, uh, you know, spent a little bit of work out as a, I was a president and CEO for a little nonprofit organization and then ended up at uh, AUSA as the vice president for NCO and soldier programs. And, of course, that's when I joined the Army Historical Foundation as a board member. So I've seen the Army Historical Foundation and the museum go from a concept to fruition and, and what the museum is today. And we're really excited to be here today to talk about uh, this wonderful, wonderful museum. I appreciate that. In fact, I appreciate uh, both of you for your service and everything that you, you've done, and I know that you continue to do for, for uh, our great Army. Sir, would you tell us a little bit about the history of the museum and, uh, and why it's so significant, and, and what message are you trying to get out to, across to, uh, to our listeners? That's yes, a great question. Uh, it's a long history. It really started about 210 years ago, or 1814. Um, it was interesting because then the Congress, 36th Congress, uh, uh, directed that both the Army and the Navy would establish a repository, uh, think a museum, a place in which to put war booty. In this case, it would be godons, it'd be flags, captured material. And it took 210 years to do that. Uh, but really, the journey began 40 years ago, 1983. Uh, several generals uh, directed by Chief of Staff of the Army uh, and the Secretary of the Army were directed to establish a museum and start a campaign plan, and hence the Army Historical Foundation came to birth uh, to, to build that particular museum. It took 40 years to do it. Uh, so they started a campaign plan, and along the way, discovered themselves, ran staff rides, do, did all sorts of historically focused stuff, but all in the spirit of honoring the American soldier and the families, and then closing that gap between the soldiers, families, and the society in which we serve. And so fast forward really the last decade or so, we started in 2016 breaking ground here uh, at Fort Belvoir, Cutting all the trees down, uh, 2018 watertight, 2020 we hand over the museum to the United States Army. Uh, 
85 uh, acres here, 185,000 square foot foot museum. It is absolutely gorgeous. And for those on the podcast who've not seen it, uh, my mission and challenge to you is get out here and see this museum. So it was a long journey. Uh, so three years now with the last year and a half or so post COVID uh, where we've kind of established a baseline for the museum visitation wise. So it's been pretty exciting to our major getting this thing started and being part of telling the soldier story. Yeah, I understand now. Sergeant Major Preston sent me a little, uh, a little, uh, a little statue of him. He said he sells them in the museum about 13 Sergeant Major of the Army. I don't know how that come about though. Hey, so, so uh, Sergeant Major, the museum is a place that really tells the, you know, the soldier's story. And it's a, you know, when I think about it, it's a place for healing uh, a lot of people when they go there. Can you elaborate just a little bit on that? You know, I've seen um, lots and lots of veterans come through here, and you're absolutely right. And, you know, for them to come through, a lot of them, you know, you think about our veterans that are out there, you know, many of them didn't have full careers like we did. Many of them were only, you know, in for two, three, four years. And, and that was a very special time in their life. And for them to come back here to the museum and to be able to see their unit and that particular time in history uh, portrayed before their eyes. I mean, it really brings a tear to their eyes. And, you know, it, it helps them see the bigger picture that their contributions serving our nation um, was, 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 you know, noted. And, uh, you know, they, they really feel that, you know, they've reached closure because they know that their service was valued because of the way it's uh, portrayed here at the museum. Is there a lot of stuff is from, like from the Vietnam Memorial, um, Vietnam information, I guess, in the uh, in the museum and stuff that people would say, especially for, you know, I'm a little bit older and I like, you know, I was in Vietnam in 67, so I like seeing stuff like that. But is there a lot of stuff from all of our, all of our wars that are in there, right? Absolutely. And if you look at, uh, you know, the history of our nation, I mean, this museum tells the history of our nation. And, you know, the history of the Army started, you know, back in 1636 when the first two rifle companies were stood up in Massachusetts. And that's, you know, the 13th of December, 1636, was the start of the Army National Guard. You know, and this year they celebrated their 387th birthday. So so it, the history of the Army here in the museum starts, you know, with the, uh, the militias and, you know, the colonial America. And then it comes all the way up through, you know, all those parts of history, all the way up to present day. I didn't want to tell you, but I was in that rifle squad. No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, if I if I uh, come in, if I came to the first time to the museum, what must I see? What would you recommend that I see at the museum? Oh God, there's so many hidden gems here, <laughs> Sergeant Major. Uh, from the moment you arrive on campus, you know, 85 acres of it, walking along the promenade, uh, looking at the bricks uh, that folks uh, some have served, some never served, put uh, put in the ground uh, in honor of of their loved ones. Really, quite frankly. Uh, it could be their father. My kids put a brick in there on the ground for me. I put one in there for my dad. And my father-in-law served in Vietnam multiple tours. And so really it's the trees, the benches. I mean, heck, even blades of grass honor our soldier in some shape, form, or fashion. But it's really from the moment you arrive to uh, being in front of the Warrior Plaza. That's about, you know, five acres of field there. We just donated a, a back in April. Um, that really is a parade ground in which you could do twilight tattoos. Uh, the last Army uh, Festival, birthday festival, we had the uh, Golden Knights jump in, did Twilight Tattoos. We unveiled the M10 Booker tank, for example. And then as you approach the museum, you see this beautiful building, stainless steel. Uh, we chose that because it's hardy steel. It's also reflective. What is it reflective of? It really reflects uh, the society in which we serve. Uh, and so as you walk in, you're greeted by soldiers and there are stainless steel pillars. They tell their individual stories. And then you walk in and you're greeted by a platoon of stainless steel pillars telling more soldier stories. And then 190 uh, different campaigns that the Army has uh, participated in in a beautiful four-year area. And so really, uh, you could spend days talking about the hidden gems that are here. But the unit tributes, we just recently did a unit tribute, uh, which units can sponsor, alumni associations can sponsor them. We recently did one for the 75th Ranger Regiment, and uh, we had folks visit here and said, why is there not a tribute for the 75th? Well, because the 75th needs to sponsor one, and we just <laughs> unveiled it with 100, 100 or so Rangers from all eras, uh, and it was, a, it was an, an epic event. I was really proud to be part of that, having served in the 1st Ranger Battalion back in the day. Uh, but once you get in, I mean, things like the 13-minute video for Noble Deeds, where you really set the tone and tenor for your visit here where you can sit down and look at it and at 13 minutes, see the history of Army from the exception, inception all the way to now. And then that really sets, again, the, the conditions for you to go in from 
a chronological order from the American Revolution all the way to current times, the changing environment we find ourselves in. And I, I'll be honest, one of the, you know, that it sound like it would be exciting, but uh, the, one of our larger exhibits is Soldier in Society, where we talk about soldier contributions to the nation, technology, what we've done and contributed to our society, society from Corps of Engineers to uh, the Panama Canal, the Alaska Canadian Highway. Uh, so I take a lot of folks that visit from industry in there to see the significance of that Army's contribution. And I think that's lost on a lot of folks. And my favorite, you know, one of my favorites, to be honest with you, I have tons of favorites, is 9th Infantry Division, Vietnam. Uh, it's an M60 machine gunner. He's a live cast sculpture, which means a living soldier. We casted the image from that, that soldier. And that's in uh, you know kind of the Cold War exhibit where we honor Korean War and Vietnam veterans. And when you look at that soldier, uh, he speaks to you. And you can see the sweat beads rolling down his face, on his face. You can see his combat load. And so there are many of those. And then one I'd end with in the Changing Times Gallery is uh, Major General, now Lieutenant General Chris, uh, uh, Chris Donahue. Um, he uh, was the 82nd Airborne Division Commander, the last American soldier out of Afghanistan. Six months later or so, he finds himself in, in Poland uh, as a Corps Commander for 18th Airborne Corps. We have his boots here. And I can't tell you how many times I've told the story about Donahue and, and his particular boots. So it's a hard question to answer. Come here for yourself. Visit this place. And those gems, they will speak to you. And you'll walk out of here with your favorites. And there are so many that we could talk about. And I'm sure Sergeant Major has his favorite. <laughs> you, you know, I, I just, just from what you said there, you know, I was in the 173rd in the, in the 1st Infantry Division, Vietnam. 173rd, really uh, probably about 30 days because they had a big battle in the... Uh, in the first entry, and every time we talk about Vietnam, I think about the fact that all these guys and that and it was more primarily guys then, but all these guys that came back to Vietnam, that uh, how they was treated and and how you know our country is upset about the war and it sort of took it out on uh, all the soldiers when they coming back. So that's uh, so I've been there once. I need to go back up there and, and look at it again because I, I I I think I went when it was before it was even opened. I'm sure you've changed a lot of stuff now. That'd be good. Yeah. Sergeant Major, you want to add anything to that? I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and you, uh, you know, SMA, you just said right there about, you know, being able to come back again. And I think that, you know, what General Thompson talked about was, I mean, there is so much. So, you know, if you plan to come to the museum, plan to come and spend, you know, a good amount of time, plan several hours so that you can really take your time and go through. And as there's so much to see and read and to take in. Because, I mean, you're looking at the history of our nation. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's amazing out there. You know, of course, you know, being a tank master gunner, you know, those armored kind of artifacts uh, that are in there, you know, you take the, uh, the Cobra King, which is, you know, was the first tank uh, in the Bastogne to, uh, to relieve the 101st. I didn't want to tell you, I was on that tank too, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you were the 101st, they, they, they would say they didn't need to be rescued. <laughs> but, but the Cobra King is here. And, and what's really cool about that is that, you know, even though that tank was completely restored, you know, it's depicted as it would have looked crashing through the barricade going into Bastogne, you know, to save the 101st. What kind of tank, um, what, what kind of tank was that? Was that a 47? What? It, it was a it was a heavy uh, M4 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 yeah, Sherman. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, there, there's, there's an FT17, which is a French Renault tank, World War One. You know, we were only involved in World War One for about 18 months, but that FT17 that's here in the museum was actually crewed by American soldiers. You know, we we didn't have tanks during World War One, so we bought about 140 tanks from the French government, and and we crewed them with American crews and. This is one of those tanks that was crewed by Americans. So there's just so much history uh, that you can get here. You can read about the crews, the individuals. And, and you know, like we've always said, you know, it's the Army's not about pieces of equipment, but it's the people. And it's the, the people that was in those uh, tanks. It was the people that was jumping out of those planes. It was the people that were on those machine guns or carrying a rifle. And uh, and that's that's the piece, I think, that really tells the soldier story. Yeah, you know, for the, the people are listening, we need to make sure that we look at our museum. Remember the people that you served with, and you, you really want me to talk, it's about the people. We can look at all the equipment, but it's more about the people that, that I fought with, that I've served with, that, uh, that I certainly will never forget. We gotta take a quick break, but stay right there, we'll be right back. This is your next mission video podcast with me, your host, Jack L. Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army. If you're enjoying this discussion, I know that you are because we're talking about your army, our army, 
Please like us, click on that subscribe button below and click on the bell next to the subscribe button to receive notifications of all of our upcoming video podcasts. We'll be right back from this word from our presenting sponsors. You're watching Your Next Mission video podcast, proudly presented by Navy Federal Credit Union, the most trusted credit union owned by members of the military community, serving all branches of the armed forces and their families. Their members are the mission. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. And Purdue Global. You're ready for a comeback, and with Purdue Global, you can do more than take classes. You can take charge of your story, of your career, of your life. Earn a degree you can be proud of and get an education employer's respect. Start your comeback at purdueglobal.edu. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're talking with Brigadier General Retired Bert Thompson, President of the Army Historical Foundation and Foundation Board Member, the 13th Sergeant Major of the Army, Kenneth O. Preston. I was gonna, I'm gonna call you Sergeant Major, you know, cause you're, uh, wait a minute, are you <laughs> junior to me? I think you are, I can't remember. Wait a minute, <laughs> Sergeant Major, I want to follow up with our last question with you, moving forward. How do we use the museum to educate Americans, you know, about the Army values and how they are really a part of, parcel of society's values? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, when you, when you look at the Army's seven values, leadership, duty, honor, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage, you know, those, those values, uh, the values of our nation are really depicted in, you know, all the exhibits, you know, whether it's the, um, you know, the, the individual soldiers and the soldier stories, whether it's the individual uh, battles and fights to uh, persevere and, and, and keep America free. I mean, those values are, are placed everywhere in the museum and, and you see them, you know, in every one of the exhibits. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, and I, again, I got to make sure I get back to the museum. Uh, sir, sometimes the best testimony for, uh, for impact the Army Museum is having is, is hearing someone's real life experience after visiting. Do you have any stories that uh, you can share with us about that? Oh, this place is replete with stories. Uh, some of them funny, some of them not so funny, some of them dead serious. Um, you know, one of the, I'll start with a humorous one. Uh, about four months ago, we had a, a mother uh, with her family and her son uh, come in and visit the museum. And they were in the Changing Times uh, exhibit. And remember, I mentioned uh, live cast uh, figures. We have, there's 70 total life size figures. Um, there's about 67 that are cast after living soldiers. And so, uh, this mother was going through the museum, uh, as I'll do, reading, uh, you know, all the artifact about the artifacts, and all of a sudden she starts screaming. And I happened to be given a tour in one of the adjacent exhibit halls, and so we, of course, the docents, which are the volunteers here, myself, run over to see what's going on. And what had happened is her son didn't tell her he was a live cast figure for one of the live cast sculptures oh in the museum on display. <laughs> and she looked up, and I saw major. These things are so realistic. I mean, they like looking you in the eye. And so she did not know this and freaked out. They thought it was funny. Uh, the docents and I, we thought we had an emergency we we're going to deal with. But that's the humorous story that when you look at these live cast figures, they are so realistic, as you well know. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, that's a kind of a, a funny story. A serious one was, you know, we've got an exhibit, a traveling exhibit called the Nisei exhibit, which will be a, in honor of Japanese Americans uh, and their service in World War II. American citizens that happen to be of Japanese descent. And so that'll start in 2026 and uh, be the first museum traveling event in our history. It'll go for five years, 10 different locations. And so we had a series of 442nd, 100th uh, infantry, both uh, Japanese American in, you know, infantry units in World War II visit us. And so we had a, what's called an MIS soldier. So it's a military in ser uh, intelligence service, uh, Japanese American, obviously spoke Japanese and in in, in English fluently, served in World War II. And we were in the, in the World War II gallery and we've got a big global map in there. And he was with his family, and I sat there for 30 minutes while I listened to this individual. Uh, it was a private in the Army to uh, tell about how, from an intelligent standpoint, we defeated the Japanese in, in the Asia Pacific. Wow. How Ch Chester yeah. Nimitz and, and MacArthur marched across the Pacific. And I tell you what, it was the most humbling experience I had. And then one last one, sorry, Major, for you is a more current one, Vietnam. I drank Valley. 
uh, November 1965 LZ X-ray. Uh, we had a no kidding veteran from that engagement, a five hour battle, pretty intense in, in, in that point of Vietnam. Um, tell the story to his son and, and his grandkids, multi-generational uh, storytelling. And he gets halfway through a story and he's telling about the event and he chokes up and starts to cry. And to see his son watching this and his grandkids saying, what's wrong with grandpa? And so we see that, you know, day in, day out here at the museum. So when we talk about this museum being a place where, yeah, there's artifacts, those artifacts are really a means to an end, right? Which is telling soldiers stories. When you come here, Sergeant so Major comes, we were talking about this earlier today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a place of healing in which these things speak to you. But really it's what's happening is you're transitioning back into a time uh, the time in which you served uh, with those experiences, those unique relationships with the, those you've led, those who you worked for. And I tell you what, it's a special place. And so it's not just artifacts. It's it's something that comes alive in its own shape, form and fashion. So it's a, it's quite the experience. So so if I so if I served in Vietnam and I was as you was talking, I was thinking about Vietnam anyway, but I was there from 67, 68 during the Tet Offensive. So is there somewhere I can go in there and say Tet Offensive and, and see all the battles and stuff that went on during Vietnam in there? Yep, yeah. we have a map uh, that's displayed there. It's a full terrain, so you could see that. So uh, again, you have that in just about every one of the exhibits and where you can tell your story as a veteran. I've seen that play out multiple times. Um, General Shinseki was happened to, happened to be here for a board meeting uh, and he was walking through the museum and he started talking to a Vietnam veteran that served in the 5th Infantry. And I watched um, healing happen right then and there where they started talking about the artifacts, talking about the helicopter hanging up on the ceiling there, the Huey, uh, talking about gunships. And they went back in time, you know, to you know, 1967, 68, uh, and their time in Vietnam and telling those stories and rekindling those relationships and bonding. And, and again, that, that happens every day. So I think, uh, well, I know uh, from, from really from World War II, Korea, we've had Korean War veterans in here, but uh, certainly World War II, Korea, Vietnam, uh, there are artifacts here. Uh, there's displays here, maps here, interactive things here that, that will speak to every veteran's heart that served in all eras of modern time. Yeah, you know, I used to, uh, General Sasaki used to talk about Ernie Kincaid. Uh, when I thought that was his platoon sergeant when he went to Vietnam, and he talked about mm -hmm. how he how he developed uh, him as an officer when he went to Vietnam. And I always thought that was a great discussion. He's a, he's a wonderful, wonderful person that... Uh, I've tried to get him on the show to, to talk about his experience. He keeps saying, I know you want me to get on, but he'd probably never come on. Hey, I want to talk <laughs> you know, about the, Go ahead. But the, the, the docents also do a yeah. very good job. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a training program they go through to be qualified. So the docents also can really help and add to, you know, the visit going through the museum. Yeah. I want to talk about our audience. I want to talk about how our audience uh, can get involved in and be part of the museum. But first, we need to take a, as always, take another quick break. Now, here's a word from two more of the organizations who make this show possible. You're watching Your Next Mission video podcast, brought to you in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield FEP Dental, Blue Cross Blue Shield FEP Vision, Part of transitioning out is that dental and vision insurance breaks off from your medical insurance. Vision and dental is very important to be able to enjoy your retirement. Blue Cross Blue Shield makes the transition so much easier. And USAA. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath or sealed with a pinky. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're blessed to be here today with the Brigadier General Retired Bert Thompson, President of the Army Historical Foundation and Foundation Board Member, the 13th Sergeant Major of the Army, Kenneth O. Preston, and I want all of our viewers to reach out to directly. Re remember, this is this is your show. Tell us about your transition. Tell us what topics you like to cover. I mean, I, w tell us what you need, and we're certainly going to help you. You can call or text me at 844-424-1134, and I'll actually reach back out to you. Or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. 
Sir Sergeant Major, we're heading into our final segment with you today, and I hope you've enjoyed it just as much as I have. I just have a, a couple more questions. Sir, you've said through uh, the show that the museum is more than a collection of artifacts and exhibits. Would you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I kind of uh, illustrated it a little bit earlier with a few uh, examples, but again, the place comes alive. Whether it's 400 people in the exhibit hall, um, you know, for a social event that we have, and oh, by the way, Sergeant Major, we do have a liquor license here. Uh, a so liquor we, license. We have, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have the opportunity to kind of uh, socialize here in the museum as it transforms itself into a social env environment. Uh, but it's it's a special place. We could seat uh, over 100 folks in our veterans hall too. So again, this place is more than just artifacts, more than just a museum. It's a space in which you can use to uh, do programs, education, both on the museum side with the museum director, Tammy Call, directing that show, we do the same thing from a foundation side. So uh, the space transforms into a lot more than just the artifacts and seeing the exhibits. It's a space that's that's usable. Again, we do our Army birthday celebrations here. We'll do it again in June of 2024. Uh, and then of course, leading up to the 250th anniversary of our Army in 2025, we'll have some big events here as well. So we're trying to get the word out about this museum so folks can come enjoy, get it dirty, have fun here, uh, learn uh, and engage. And so those artifacts, they're, oh, they're important. But, um, you know, Colonel Clay Lyle getting ready to retire in two months. Um, you know, his his Bradley sitting right here in the museum in which he did the Thunder Runs into, into Baghdad back in the day. Um, here in uh, Vietnam, veterans uh, engage with General Shinseki, former chief of staff of the Army and the uh, chairman of our board, to sitting at lunch with the Korean War Ranger, uh, who I'm having a conversation with, talking about the exhibits here, and he stops mid-strides and, and tears running down his face, talking about how this place for him was therapeutic, thoughts he hasn't kind of experienced in, in decades that start coming out. And again, it's just a matter of moving through this space and being part of it, uh, being still, reading about the exhibits, uh, and, and just kind of getting in the moment. So it is more than just stuff. Um, it's an experience in and of itself. And I think that's what truly Sergeant Major makes this place so special. And so I just encourage the folks to get out here and see it for themselves. Um, so I don't know if Sergeant Major has anything to add to that, but but certainly artifacts are important. Stories are even more important. Well, you know, you know, it's really, you want to add anything to it, Sergeant Major? No, I was just going to say, you know, but you know, what, what we're finding now too is that there's a lot more uh, unit uh, associations out there now that are planning their annual reunions here at the museum. So so a lot of the veterans coming back here and it's given them the opportunity not only to see the museum, but you know, we're right next door to Mount Vernon. And of course you know, we're right down the road from the, the National Mall and you know everything there is to see there in Washington, DC. Yeah. You, you know what? I, I, what really makes me feel here both of you are so uh, committed to making sure that museum, people learn about the museum, understand about the importance of the museum. And I, I certainly, as a as a veteran, I appreciate all that you're doing and continue to do. You know what, uh, Sergeant Major, I know you're a history buff because every time every time I ask you a question, you know about every doggone thing. How is the history of the Army representative of the American history? So, American history, and that's what's great about the museum, and that's why you're going to see so many. Like during the day, um, you'll see bus tours from the local schools all around here, Northern Virginia and Maryland you know, bringing school-age kids, you know, through the museum because, you know, not only to get to see the uh, the history of the United States and how we were formed uh, back during the Revolutionary War, you know, all the way through the conflicts up through present day, but it's also like General Thompson talked about the contributions of the Army to the nation. I mean, you see everything in here, there's a, there's a replica of the Wright Brothers Flyer. I mean, you know, that, you know, the, the Army contracted the Wright Brothers to build aircraft. And, uh, and that's really what got the aircraft industry off the ground. And as you know, the Air Force was part of the Army Air Force all the way up until, you know, 1946, 47. Can we kick so, them out? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to see that piece of it. And then, you know, there's, there's the, the STEM piece of it, science, technology, education, math. I mean, it's, it's amazing now for the things that they've got set up in here for the youth be able to really apply themselves and see how science and technology works within the Army. And it, and it kind of plants a little seed in there, maybe in how they can contribute, not just with the Army, but how they can contribute uh, to our nation in the in the future. Yeah. Uh, this is a question probably for, probably for both of you. How can members of the audience be involved with the Army Museum? 
That's a that's a great question, and we got some good answers for you. Get out here, visit. <laughs> like that. One word, visit. You got to get into the arena to experience it. But you know, it's not only about visiting. You could go online. We both, you know, the museum has a website. The historical foundation has a website. Uh, I would encourage everybody that is served to, to sign up for the the unit registry for soldier registry. And so you can go on the website, tell your story as much as your story as you want. Um, and and you come into the museum. We got touch screens. It is a modern museum. Science and technology sort of major talk about. And you can look up soldiers. I can find you as long as you've entered your information in a database. So, again, this place is about telling stories. So I encourage folks uh, that have served to tell a story or tell a story of, of somebody that in their family that served, their dad, their brother, whatever it is. But there's other ways to do it. You can you can if you want to do a brick, we have bricks, regular sized bricks, and they're actually granite. I mean, they're beautiful. I've got one that's eight by eight that my kids did for me. Again, I did one for my father-in-law and my father. And so there's a way you for forever for for the, for history um, put into the ground a brick in honor of someone uh, that served. And there's trees, there's benches. I mentioned earlier we'll we'll make a, a blade of grass available for you if that's what you want. Uh, but there are a lot of ways to include the unit tributes where you can honor the units you served in, the individuals you served with. Uh, or somebody within your family. And I think that's extremely important to do. And you'll see that throughout the museum. We have corporations that sponsor certain exhibit spaces, not individual exhibits, that's not how we do it, uh, but that contribute to it. And we have what's called the circle of distinct distinctions wall, where um, if it weren't for those folks that contributed to this place, or major, we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation today. I can guarantee you. And so whether it's just being a member of the foundation slash museum, uh, putting a brick in the ground, uh, coming to visit, just come visit and be present in the moment here at this space. And I guarantee you, you'll find a way to contribute. There you go. Sorry, Reggie, you want to add anything? No, this is, uh, you know, like General Thompson said, you just, you just got to come. And, and I think when you, when you walk through the museum and you spend a few hours here, you know, you walk away with a sense of awe about, you know, how great our nation really is. And, you know, and, and when you look at this museum, even though it's the National Museum of the United States Army, uh, it really gives you an appreciation for just how great our nation is and how great the people are. And, uh, you know, and, and the fact that we still have young people out there that continue to volunteer and serve each and every day. Yeah. You know, it's amazing to me that there's, you know, a lot of people that serve that don't know anything about the museum, that ought to mm -hmm. learn about the museum because it's, it's their museum. You know, they're the ones that, uh, you know, that, that fought for our country and did a lot of stuff for our country that uh, they certainly should uh, should visit and, and see what uh, what the Army has done for, for a long, long time. You know, this has been a great discussion uh, with both of you. And I, I don't know if we've covered everything, but hopefully we've covered just about all that uh, you want to tell the audience. But before I let you go, we'd like to show the viewers a quick video about how you can uh, you really support the Army Museum. As an Army veteran, you have earned your place in the National Army Museum. Add your story through the Army Historical Foundation's Soldiers Registry. You can also order a personalized brick, unit tribute, or commemorative bench to be placed on the museum's grounds. Proceeds support the Foundation's campaign to keep the museum a world-class tribute to the American soldier. You can also donate online at armyhistory.org. Be a part of your museum. Support the Army Historical Foundation today. That's a great video, and if people want to learn more about the museum, what should they do? Yeah, I would say, Sergeant Major, get on the website, check us out, uh, the Army Historical Foundation or the National Museum of the United States Army. Um, that's where you start, uh, and you know, if you want to be present, get here. Sergeant Major and I will we'll, we'll volunteer to give you a tour of this place. <laughs> you just arrange it for us, let us know. So I know you've got a lot of viewers out there, Sergeant Major, so that's a heavy load for us, but I promise you, you reach out to me through that website, uh, I will give you a tour. I'll make it worth your while to visit this museum. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's a family for a family. What families to come and see that? Go ahead, start major. Absolutely, and 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 online too. I mean, you know, you have the opportunity because you know you get a ticket. It's free to get into the museum, but but sometimes you get a lot of people here. So you know, I encourage people to go online, register, get a ticket. You know, so that uh, you know when you get here, that you know if the museum's full, I mean, you're you've got a place reserved. You know, be able to come through and see see the museum. So you go online to get a ticket so you can uh, just go through. Do you have to have a ticket to go into the museum, or I guess? No, it's, we use that. That so uh, during COVID, sir, major, we had to have a ticketing system, and so we've kept that in place. And one reason so I can reach out to you. 
Because yeah. I want to follow yeah. up with you, Sergeant Major, and have you come <laughs> uh, But what it does is allow us to space out visitation. And we listen, we've never had a problem where we've hit max capacity here. This place is huge, 185,000 square feet, 85,000 of that exhibit. So we got plenty of space. I encourage all 80,000 of your viewers to show up at once. We'll take good care of them. Yeah. There you go. You there you go. Hey, thanks so much for being on the show. I mean, uh, this is an important topic for all of us, and, and uh, hopefully we covered all the information that you want to cover. Uh, but this is important for all of us. There's a lot of people out there, and I like the fact you talked about closure, about healing, about seeing the kind of things that you did while you was in the military. That's important. It's important for us to go back and look at history and the kind of things that uh, you know veterans have done for this country. Any final thoughts, anything that you want to share with the audience that maybe maybe we missed, sir? We'll start with you. Any final thoughts, that, uh, anything you want to share? Well, first, I just want to thank you, Sergeant Major, for what you're doing. Uh, one, kind of outreach to all the viewers out there. Thanks for your service and whatever capacity you have served in your lifetime. Um, I just really would like to thank all of you for, one, listening to this. But I just encourage you truly to get out here and visit this. So if you find yourself in a, a national capital region, please consider us a destination of choice. Make time to visit your museum. Uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of sacrifice, and a lot of contribution went in to make this place the special place that it is. And, and so come experience it. Uh, you will not regret it. There's a lot of things to see in the, in the Northern Virginia area, lots of museums, but I can tell you, you won't regret seeing uh, the Museum of the United States Army, I guarantee you. And we're here to serve. Oh, I appreciate that. Now, Sergeant Major, uh, sir, I don't know if you know that, but Sergeant Major used to have to carry my bags when I get off the plane and stuff like that. So. He carries mine now. I'm okay. just kidding. <laughs> hey, any final thoughts? I'm still carrying the bags. <laughs> <laughs> any final thoughts? Anything you want to share with the audience? No, it, just just one thing that I would add is uh, use the web page, you know, to come in and check out what's going on with the museum. You know, the great thing about the museum being here in the national capital uh, region is, you know, we've got the old guard, we've got Pershing Zone, you know, the Army Band. Uh, so we've got a lot of assets here that do demonstrations and, you know, they'll do uh, tattoo kind of ceremonies out here on the parade field. So if you're looking to watch something like that in conjunction with visiting the museum, check out the web page and all the activities that the museum has going on every day. You know, now you're our third show that we've done today. And, and so they've wore me out here. They work me down here. But but all the other two shows, I'd go one, two, three, and they had to give me a hua. So I just want to see how motivated you are. We had a couple active duty on there, a couple of retirees. Now we got, the you know, former sergeant major of the Army, a general in it. So, so I'm going to see how pumped up you are. So ready? One, two, three. Push <laughs> I love it. I love it. Good, right? <laughs> hey, there you go. You got it. You, 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 you're the winner. There's no question on my mind about that. That's it. Thanks Make a lot. For, thanks a lot for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Thank y'all. <laughs> thanks again to Brigadier General Bert Thompson and Sergeant Major Ken Preston for, for being our guest today. I'm Jack Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, and you've been watching your next mission video podcast. Thank you for joining us. Log on to our website at yournextmission.org and leave me a review. And now if you listen to the show, it's got to be a good review. While you're there, you can visit our nonprofit or corporate partners and see all the jobs and services that are available that can assist you in your transition from the military. And we just added a new job board in partnership with the Recruit Military where you can search for a job that's just right for you. Check out this video on our website to learn more on how to fine tune your search. You can also create your own individual profile, scan a QR code on the screen or the QR code on the website to create your own profile. All information collected is confidential and won't be shared with anyone unless you want us to. Please know we want to hear from you. We want to help you. At this, this is just another way for us to do that. You can also follow me on my personal media pages, Facebook, Twitter, now known as X, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Rumble. And if you like what we're doing here with your next mission, click on that subscribe button below. And don't forget, click on the bell too to receive notifications about all of our upcoming video podcasts. Don't forget, we want to hear from you. Please leave me a message or send me a text at 844-424-1134 or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Thanks again to Brigadier General Thompson and Sergeant Major Preston. It was just, just great having them on the show. And, and this is where I get my final thoughts. You know, I want to tell you something. The Army Museum is our museum. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, I spent uh, 36 years in the Army. I was in Vietnam, a 
Afghanistan, a lot of different places. And I served with a, a lot of wonderful and great people. And it's important for us to pull together as, as an army, as veterans at active duty, whatever, but we need to pull together to make sure that we, we support our foundation, the United States Army and our, I say our museum. So if you get a chance to visit, no, in fact, don't get a chance to visit and see what you've done and see what your great army has done. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks to New Mind Studios and of course, our sponsors, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, FEP Dental, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, FAP Vision, and USAA. We appreciate all you do for our military. And as always, see you on the high ground. Huh! You've been listening to Your Next Mission, brought to you by the American Freedom Foundation. Learn more by visiting yournextmission.org.